Tar Heels host Lehigh on Sunday afternoon. And Adam, I, 90 to 68 was the final score. Tar Heels win comfortably. And I feel like this is a weird game because Carolina has never, I never felt like Carolina was really threatened in this game. The Tar Heels were up 15 late in the first half, and it looked like they were about to just blow the doors off of it. And then all of a sudden, to Lehigh's credit, they hit, I think it was five out of six three-pointers. And even in doing that, only got the lead down to nine at halftime. And then the Tar Heels just didn't look very good the first maybe five or six minutes of the second half. Lehigh got it all the way down to three. And then the Tar Heels just controlled the action on both sides the rest of the way. Um, individually, Armando Baycott was dominant. I mean, and he has been... I mean, it's two games. He had 22 and 20 in this game. He's averaging 23 and a half points, 16 and a half rebounds in two games. He just, I mean, he looks engaged and effective. R.J. Davis, who didn't shoot the ball very well in the first game this season against Radford, shot the ball well in this game. And we have seen throughout R.J.'s career, when he is shooting well, he can pour in the points. And he had 22 in this game. Harrison Ingram uh, did a bunch of stuff to help Carolina win. He finished with 14 points, seven rebounds. Carolina again plays 10 players, nine. uh, It was eight minutes or more in the first game, and that's where we were here. The 10th out of those 10 guys was Jalen Washington, who played just under nine minutes. Um, So 10 players who played essentially nine minutes or more and then, Adam, you said this on our Rapid Reactions podcast, and I, I thought it was a really good point, and I was thinking the same thing, but you verbalized it better. If you just looked at this box score, you'd be like, oh, this is a Roy Williams coach game because Carolina outscored Lehigh 38-16 in the paint, 14-2 in second chance points, 17-3 in fast break points. They shot 24 more free throws and made 20 more free throws than Lehigh did. Um Adam, Carolina didn't even shoot it well in this game. Cormac Ryan was th- uh, two for seven. Paxson Wojcik was 0 for two. Uh, Elliot Cadeau was three of eight. Jalen Withers was two of five. I think all of those guys are better offensive players than they p- showed in this game. And Carolina scored 90 points and won by 22. So, an encouraging game. Hadn't even talked about Carolina's defense holding Lehigh to below 40% shooting. Carolina's going to play much better teams than Lehigh. We understand that. But for game two, I thought there were a lot of encouraging signs for the Tar Heels coming out of this one. If Carolina just shoots it from the outside, kind of what I think will be average for this team, it's like a 40-point game. Yeah. And so to be able to put up 90 with a poor shooting day, I thought was pretty impressive. Lehigh's good enough. They've got a good coach. Yeah, they'll they've con- got good guards. They'll contend in their conference. They've got big guys who I think are probably good big guys in the Patriot League. I mean, no offense to them. I'd like to be a good big guy in the yeah. Patriot League. I'd just like to be a big guy. Yeah. But the problem is Armando Baycott's a good big guy in the nation. And he looked like it. As he correctly said, some of his rebounds came off his own misses. That's just that's just how you get a lot of offensive rebounds, yeah. James. R.J. Davis's little mid-range jumper, I mean, when he's making that, he's tough to guard Mm -hmm. because he can take one dribble and knock it in from 19 feet, and there's nothing you can do about it. And it prevents him from trying to go closer to the basket where sometimes he does have some trouble because he's just not as big as the guys who are under there. So that's a dangerous part of his game. The the, the Keeling zone, 19 feet. Yeah. (laughs) When, When those two guys are clicking together, you got big guy, you got little guy, that's tough to defend. And then the Tar Heels have some supplementary guys kind of around them. And that's what they did to, to get to 90, even on a day where I'm not sure their best, maybe four five and six guys played their best. Like Cormac Ryan's going to have better days than that. Yes. Paxson Wojcik's going to have better days than that. So uh, again, it, we've reached this point where like we, we can't really know for sure about the Tar Heels until they play, for example, Villanova. Then we'll decide what we think about them. Like, nobody's going to change their mind after Carolina plays UC Riverside. Right. Unless it's poorly. Then we'll decide that they're terrible. But I do think 
the, the fact that you have so many options and that through two games, some of those options, all those options really at one time or another have shown good things. Seth Trumbull, who we think of as like defensive guy, did some good things offensively. Yeah, three assists, got to the free throw line, did some good. I thought outside of Baycott and Davis, I thought, and Harrison Ingram continues to just be, I don't think he's had like an ex, like this incredible game yet. He's just been very steady and productive. I thought Trimble, Washington, and High off the bench were all eye-catching in this game, even though none of them had huge numbers necessarily. I mean, Trimble is so good defensively and had the three assists and no turnovers in this game, which I think for him, that's really good. He, if he can do the – I mean, and he played, what, 19 minutes. That's going to get him 19 minutes if he's three assists, no turnovers, because he's so good defensively. And as we talked to Zayden High in here about a couple weeks ago, I mean, he just does stuff. He had five rebounds. Two of them were offensive. In 12 minutes. Yeah, he had an assist and no turnovers. And he got to the free throw line, made his free throws. And so he's just out there doing stuff. And Adam, I mean, and as we talked about with Jalen Washington, Look, Armando Baycott is Carolina's starting center. That's obvious. But it seems like Jalen Washington is carving out this role where he's going to give you 10 minutes for now and maybe more later, backing up Armando Baycott so Armando doesn't have to play 37 minutes. He can play 29 minutes or 31 minutes. And while Jalen Washington is not as physically mature as Armando Baycott is at this point, this is my – I mean, I think Jalen Washington has the highest ceiling of anybody on Carolina's team. He, he's he got long arms, and he just hasn't – remember, we've talked about this. He just hasn't had that much time to to work on himself and get better because he spent the last – before this past offseason, the previous two, he was rehabbing the whole time. So he had an offseason to just try and get better, work on his body, work on his game, and – you can just see that it's, I think, it's slow, but you can see that it's coming. So, to me, that was those were all really impressive performances and some roles that are becoming defined coming off Carolina's bench, which, as we've said a million times, again, the Tar Heels look very different in how they're distributing their minutes and using their bench with this particular group. And I'm not 100% sure that who's on the bench and who's in the starting lineup is etched in stone. No, I don't think it is either. Point. I mean, Elliot Cadeau came in very quickly into this game. Um, Jalen Withers was effective coming off the bench, even though he didn't have a ton of offense. And again, he's working his way back in after missing some time in practice. Um, and I mean, Elliot Cadeau played, what, Adam, let me look here. He played over 20 minutes, or he played 21 minutes in this game, which was the fifth most of anybody on the team. And so, I agree with that. I, I think that is still fluid. I thought Cadeau was encouraging because I thought he was not very good in the first half in the way that he just took some shots that you don't need to take and to say nothing of the fact they didn't go in. The fact that he took them is what I'm talking about. But then in the second half, I thought he came back and was much better and helped Carolina control the tempo. He was in for that run that took it from a three-point lead to a 12-point lead quickly. And... So I, that's what Carolina needs him to do. And Withers, I mean, it's hard for people to know this because they didn't really see the Tar Heels at this point, but pre-Withers injury, I think he probably was the fifth starter. So I, I think that's that's TBD going forward. Yeah. All in all, I thought solid early season win where there's still plenty to work on, but Carolina – did what it needed to do. It was the better team. It was in control 90% of the game. And Tariels go out there and advance to 2-0. and What if the fans had stormed the court? <laughs> Guys, we've done it. Lehigh, sorry, get out of here, Mountain Hawks. By the way, Lehigh shot 36.5%. Just keep that in your back pocket. And that includes half their made field goals were three-pointers. They had made 10 in the first two games combined. They made 13 in this game. They shot 33 threes. So, and one final thing. Had Carolina gone 5 of 17 in a game from three-point range last year, they would not have won by 22. They might have won, but they wouldn't have won by 22.